Hey everyone, it's uh, Scott Norris here from Virtualize Me. Now today I'm just going to do a quick video, uh, part of a you know short video series on the custom forms, uh, new in Virtualize Automation 7.4. Today's just going to be just basic 101 um, capabilities of the fields and ones that you would generally find across all the different elements uh, within a, within a custom form. So if we just have a quick look, let's say for example a text field. Now you can see we've got visibility uh, and we've got read only and we've got a custom help so what I might do here is like, okay what about if we go right we want a checkbox here for example this checkbox might be to say you know um, uh, enter custom postname as an example uh, and we can have value default value is going to be no let's just put it as that now we can go right well let's let's use the visibility so you can do a, a, a constant you can say you know is this visible yes or no now maybe you want a field that always has persistent data and you just want to make it invisible that you can link other fields great uh, we can have a conditional external source but let's do conditional so conditionals are really good so we can say you know, we want to say, yes, make this visible. If the enter custom host name equals yes. And we can add another one to say, because you should do the reverse as well. Uh, no, if enter custom host name equals no. So let's just give that a quick look. Let's go, all right. Uh, custom forms, here's my widget and let's see what it looks like now we can see I can't see that text box anywhere um, I tick that there it goes, I untick it and it goes away so that's a really simple way, you know you can make nice dynamic forms only show the information you want All right. let's get rid of that, uh, let's go back and we go okay, we've got that fine but how do we know that we're going to get you know a right host name or something like that well another other than read only um, which does exactly what it sounds like is that you can't edit it uh, we go okay well let's have a look at our values we don't want a value here we want someone to enter it so we want to leave it blank but we want a regular expression uh, for example so here we can go again you can have a conditional value as well based on what someone selected but let's just go a regular expression just for alphanumeric. So that should do the job. And validation is, you know, I uh, can't name special characters. Cool. Let's save that. And let's reload that form and see what it looks like. I want to enter custom host name field and I go I want uh, test host zero one bang oh invalid all right so it looks like my reg expression can't have a zero in it so I stuff that up but you get my point right uh, dollar signs can't have it dollar signs can't have it and I can put them anywhere and it stops someone entering. So that's a really nice way to do some quick validation on manual entered fields. I prefer never to have manual entered fields and only have drop downs, but sometimes it can't be avoided, right? So let's have a look at what else is available. So we can have a min and max value. And what we can actually do too is match a field. So we can say this field has to equal drop down, for example. So I'll save that. Go back into here, go to custom forms, we go drop down. All right, loads up. I ignore most of these. These are just this is just a working form I'm using for demos of different things. So yeah, you can see what these are used for in uh, other videos. And we hit this, and we can go right, hello, and that's saying it doesn't match the drop down field. Now we can see 2008. Upgrade, e -hire. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's have a look e -hire. Boom, works. Awesome. 
So you can see there that you can match it to another field's value, which is again, pretty, pretty cool. Now that's the most part for that. Now drop downs, let's have a look at drop downs. Now when you see drop downs um, and values, so let's take this away and go constant. When you see these fields, now the, the, this type of field, the value label field, is available in a, a number like um, the multi select, uh, drop downs, I believe the uh, value picker has it as well. When it's like that, um, what you can do is you can have an external, you can either add the labels into here um, or you can have an external source. Now, when it's an external source, you can either have a return an array of string or array of object um, that matches what uh, the the elements trying to uh, show and that will just give you the drop down list so for this one it will just give me the drop downs now if I was to go um, do a return in an action of just properties then it will do that value that label value. Uh, so if we have a, I'll show you what I mean here. If we have a look at design, I'll find an action. Custom uh, forms. See if that's it. No, no. Hang on with me, I do have it here somewhere. Yeah, okay. So we can do here, which is an array of string that returns, that works fine. We can do a properties, so return type properties, and we do value and then label, value, label. So when you see those, that's the two types of actions that you can return, and they should work. Now, if we go back to here, we've seen the drop down. You just get all applications. Now, I'll sit save for that. We go back into here. We look at the uh, widget, and you would have seen before that I've got my drop downs of my applications. Now, if I go back again, uh, and we have a look at uh, conditional values. So for example, if we go image here and then we do say a drop down, this drop down I'm going to use, uh, yep, and it's free to answer and constant. So we can actually do here say windows, um, windows, windows, Linux, Linux, uh, just as an example here, then I want this to be conditional value. So let's uh, go to values, let's have a look at a conditional value. We're going to say um, for this one, I want uh, HTTP uh, 240 and I want Windows, I think it's iPhone.png. Let's just double check that. Windows iPhone PNG. I might just proper if well, I've got two drop downs. Uh, I'll take that last one. Uh, that's why you should name things properly. Uh, actually, let's go back to here and go OS. Now I've got to write that all again. Awesome. So that's right. I should be. I'm just going to copy that one. If OS equals to Windows. And then I want to add another expression. I'm going to set value to Linux if OS 
equals Linux. Well, let's see if that works. Boom, boom. So pretty cool. So you know you can see how you can start having some pretty you know sexy looking forms. So let's uh, exit out of there. And what's else to probably show is obviously tabs. So we've got additional tabs, and again tabs can have the same visibility, right? So you can have conditional value, and I can actually say that I want to make this visible if. Let's just use that um, if OS equals Windows uh, as an example. Now I always like to stay case sensitive and then we'll go regular expression no um, if OS equals um, let's go nothing and we go save that. And in this tab, let's just put text area saying, and I'll show you what this need, what this happens if we go read only to. Uh, this is a new tab that I made up here by magic. Uh, oh, look if I could spill. All right, now we can go read only. Let's give that a go. We go yep, and save that. So let's go here, let's load this form up. And you can see there's only one tab. Uh, I'm gonna select Windows, boom, there's a new tab. I can go there and there's a text area that I can't edit. edit. Oh, yeah, I don't know why that didn't work. Let's just go back in and fix that. Ooh. Is that I want the default value to be that. Oh, I shouldn't hit finish. And we load it back up again. Choose Windows, new tab, new tab by magic. So, you know, that's a pretty good rundown of just the little features and functionality uh, that you have in between the custom forms. All right, that's all. Cheers, bye.